Ladies and gentlemen, back at it again. Another episode of Spooky Software. It's your friend, your longtime friend, your close friend. It's me, Eric. I'm here today. I'm really excited about uh, today's topic. I'm always excited about today's topic, but today I'm especially excited about today's topic. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something called Astro. Um, it's a little bit uh, newfangled. It's at the, at the time of this recording, uh, only in beta. Uh, but, um, I've actually had some good success with it, uh, using it for some side projects for some personal, you know, websites and things like this. So, um, I, you know, I thought I would just uh, share it with everybody. Um, so Astro is, uh, a, a little bit interesting and here, here you can see, I'm taking a look at the, the homepage. Um, so Astro is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a piece of JavaScript tooling, uh, you know, and, and uh, I realize that that comes with a little bit of baggage because the last thing that you probably want to think about is more JavaScript tooling. Um, but, you know, this particular thing is uh, less so a framework. Um, you know, it's less like React or less like Solid.js or, you know, any other number of... Uh, things that you use on the web to build websites. Uh, and it's more like a sort of old school um, HTML templating uh, kind of tooling, right? And so um, th what makes Astro unique is that, uh, first of all, it is sort of HTML first, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, its primary use case is to, you know, basically write some templates uh, in their templating language, uh, which is very familiar sort of if you're a JavaScript person and you're in the sort of modern JavaScript kind of componenty thing, uh, componenty space, right? Uh, you might feel very comfortable writing Astro. Um, and so, it, you know, it produces HTML, right? And so uh, as of the time of this recording, uh, you know, um, uh, these are like stateless components that you write and you, you compile them ahead of time and they give you HTML files that you, you know, put up on the web, on the web as uh, static assets, right? Um, I think they actually have some beta support for uh, some experimental support for if you want to, you know, generate these templates on the fly on a server, um, you know, and create the HTML uh, as the request comes in from a browser. But uh, the sort of happy path, if you will, is, is generating the HTML ahead of time. And, um, you know, we can just take a look at... Uh, an example of what an Astro uh, component looks like. So, you know, um, it's somewhere between like Markdown and, you know, JSX and, you know, maybe Jinja or any of those uh, other templating languages that you may be familiar with. Um, you know, so, you know, you got some JavaScript to import things and you can compute things and, you know, of course, make HTML. Um, and, and it turns out that like, this in and of itself, you can see this is a .astro file. Um, this in and of itself is basically, you know, 90% of what you need for most kinds of websites, right? Um, and, and I think Astro really hits this uh, nail on the head where they recognize that, like, most of the web is actually pretty static, right? Um, you know, things like blogs, uh, uh, you know, e-commerce websites even to an extent, um, you know, recipe websites, you know, almost anything you can think of documentation websites are mostly, you know, static, you know, like I'm looking at this page, this is, you know, Astro's homepage, you know, there's not really anything necessarily interactive here. There's nothing like, these are just links and text and, you know, basic sort of document based web based, uh, content. Right. And so, uh, for example, here's the spooky software website, my website. Um, this is kind of the same thing, right? Uh, you know, it's just HTML. Uh, this happens to be generated from Markdown or whatever, but you know, uh, you know, I write these blog posts maybe once a year, uh, and I can generate this HTML and, you know, just produce it. Uh, and that's really all I need. And I, I just have the network tab open here to sort of demonstrate this, you know, uh, there's just some HTML, you know, a couple kilobytes of HTML, um, some CSS, a sprinkle of uh, fonts and and that's it there's there's no there's no javascript uh you know there's no interactivity these are just links and, and static content right um but coming back to what sort of makes astro special right is that uh it does have a path uh for you to sort of scale right which what i mean by that is like um yes maybe most of the web or most of your website might be static but you might have like one little tiny bit of interactivity, right? You might have like one little section, like imagine we're talking about an e-commerce website. Well, yes, 90% of it is static. You know, you've got, you know, in inventory and prices and all that stuff basically stays the same. Um, 
you know, it's, it's not real time, so to speak. Um, but you might have like one part of the page that's interactive, like the cart, right? So this user is browsing the website and, you know, adding things to their cart and, you know, that state, that's dynamic as they add things to the cart, you know, there's interactivity there, right? Um, and so Astro has a way to, in this templating language, essentially, sort of uh, uh, combine together what they call islands, uh, or I, I guess really what I'm saying is, you know, parts of the static HTML that are driven by more dynamic, more um, sort of reacty or solid or angular or, you know, any other framework you can think of, um, like a section of the page that is sort of driven by, you know, event handlers, like click handlers, drag drop, you know, all that kind of stuff and has state, right? So, um, you know, in and of itself, if we go back to this, uh, you know, this Astro component has no state, right? You know, you can see it's computing some things, but, uh, this is sort of a run once function that it doesn't change over time, right? But, okay, so Astro is, you know, not a framework for client-side interactivity, but it does have a way to sort of in this server-side static generated kind of space, mark off little what they call islands, little parts of the, uh, of the HTML that are interactive, and you can sort of bring your own framework, bring your own solid, bring your own React, you can use any of them basically, um, and, uh, and, and make one part of the, the application interactive, right? And so um, I, I'm gonna demonstrate that here. So um, I've decided for whatever reason that, you know, um, I, you know, I really like my website, but I want comments, right? And so uh, what I'm doing here is I've added a new feature to my to my website, this comment section here. You can see that Grace Hopper and, and Linus Torvalds are, are commenting on my blog posts, right? And, uh, you know, I have a way for the user to sort of add a comment, right? And um, I just want to show that real quick in code just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, so I'm going to look, look at here, this, this new file here. So this is a regular JavaScript, but this is not Astro. And you can see that I'm using SolidJS here, but you could use, you know, any framework that you wanted that had some interactivity, React, Vue, Angular, whatever you want. Um, and, and you can see that, you know, I've got some imports and some, some static data. You know, you could imagine that this is, you know, pulling this data from a database or whatever. It doesn't matter. I've just written it into static here. Um, but, but here's sort of the, the, the meat and potatoes, if you will, which is that we've got this comp this comments component, right? And this is very familiar with you to you if you're you're into these sort of modern JavaScript frameworks. You know, we've got a component. We've got some state here. Uh, in solid state is handled with these signals. I have a whole other video on solid. This is not about solid. Uh, but the point is that you know we've got some state. We've, we're doing some interactive things like focusing text areas. You know, um, you know, showing and hiding things. And of course, we also have some HTML. We have some solid templates here, right? We're using JSX and solid templates, not Astro, um, to, to render these components or render these, uh, comments, uh, and, and show like feedback and, you know, uh, form and all kinds of things to, to get comment interactivity, right? All right. Well, this is great. So, um, I have already built and, uh, am running a preview of my, of my website with this comment, um, uh, component. And you can see that like already, you know, just, if I just refresh this page again, there, like if I just highlight for just JavaScript, there's no JavaScript right now. Um, and, and, and actually I already have content, right? So remember Astro is HTML first. And so, um, Astro, uh, Astro will automatically, you know, sort of server side render your, even your solid or your react components, uh, and produce HTML, uh, and put it in these static documents. So, um, again, you know, I've already built this, but I just want to show it. So inside my blog post here, this is a, uh, uh, technology, right? Um, here's all the content, the markdown of my, of my, uh, blog post, but here at the bottom of this blog post, I have, you know, used this comments component. This should be very familiar to you. You know, if you're using any of these modern frameworks, you have the idea of, you know, sort of rendering a component. Um, I have imported that just like any other file. Uh, and, and Astro knows how to shove these components into st otherwise static content into this markdown. And as I said, um, sort of on the build process, it will run it once and sort of generate the static content uh, and put it in there, right? Okay, but that's great. But um, there's a problem here, which is that... Uh, I said that Astro is really good at 
static content and it is, but like, this is actually an interactive content. Uh, not only does it have these comments, but it also has like buttons and you, you can see, I'm like trying to click this thing and like nothing's happening. Right. And actually the reason nothing is happening is solid, which is a client side rendering. Well, it does other things too, but, uh, of course it has interactivity in the browser. Um, there is no JavaScript here. We, we haven't asked for that. Right. And so I'm just going to do one thing, uh, in my, in my code here. And so where I use this, um, solid JS component, um, I'm going to tell Astro that this is actually a client side. I'm just going to use this like client. I think they call it a directive or something, uh, client. Um, I'm going to say visible and I'll explain exactly what this means. But the, the important part is, um, the client part here is telling Astro like, this is not just static content. There's more here. And I actually need you to include some JavaScript that I will run. All right, so I, I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to do one thing. So, you know, I'm going to rebuild this uh, from scratch with this new client directive. I'm telling Astro that this has client side interactivity. Um, and again, so I've rebuilt static HTML. You can see that the output of these things is, is, is static HTML. And now it's, you know, rendering this preview for me to take a look at. So I'm just going to refresh this. Okay. And you can see that, okay, I'm on the home page. Um, and again, this is still just static content, uh, on the home page. There's, there's no dynamicness to any of this or anything. It's just HTML, CSS, no, no JavaScript, right? So if I just look for JavaScript, there's nothing, right? Okay, but I put this comments inside this, this one blog post, right? Okay, so now when I view this particular page, um, again, we have all the same static content, but we also do have a tiny, tiny bit of script. You can see it's actually pretty small in terms of size. It's only 900 bytes. Um, and I'll explain exactly what this is in a moment, but uh, what's actually gonna happen is as I get close to this component, right? As I scroll down the page, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, um, and I and I get I have some breakpoints in here. When I get to this component, like all of a sudden, um, now I like have more JavaScript. You can see that the browser actually started to download. Uh, this is about 15 kilobytes worth of JavaScript. So that 15 kilobytes that we downloaded as we got close to this comments as we scrolled down um, is actually solid, right? It's solid and this component. And you can see that as opposed to before, now when I click on this stuff, you know, there's interactivity. You see like, uh, you know, things are visible. I can like, you know, write a comment, leave a comment. And, you know, it says, it gives me feedback and, you know, the whole thing happens, right? This is interactive. Right. Um, so how exactly did this work? Well, um, what we have actually done here, uh, is if I go back to this code, um, uh, this client directive right here, this client, um, this is telling it's Astro, you know, don't just render this once render it on the server. Yes. Get that HTML, but also make sure that when you build the bundles, when you build the website, uh, also build all the JavaScript, any like, you know, um, front end frameworks that I use solid. And of course, any component code, uh, and, and, and send it to the browser. And this visible part says is basically, uh, the modifier for this client directive that tells it, when do you want me to load all of that JavaScript in the browser? And I said here visible. And actually this is the perfect kind of use case for this visible one, which is to say that like, um, you don't need to load any of that JavaScript until the user is like close to scrolling to it. So in this case, we've got a long blog post. Um, we want the page to load very, very quickly. Initially, we don't need any of that JavaScript at all to load, load the page. We, you know, they can start reading the blog post and as they scroll down, as they get close to that comment section, then they might be interested in actually, you know, doing some interactive work there. And that's the perfect time to, um, to load the, the component and the interactive content. So again, Astro has this very like static first, get the HTML to the user as quickly as possible, leave the JavaScript, leave the heavy bits behind um, and sort of load them lazily, load them on demand. And there are a bunch of different ways that you can tell Astro, um, you know, when to load things. I think for instance, there's one called idle, which is to say that, you know, when the browser is idle after sort of the, uh, the page is finished rendering, you know, all the heavy stuff at the beginning, done all its big layout, you know, has all the images in memory and all that stuff. Then you can, then you can load. There's also one that's like client load, for instance, which is just like load it right away, um, regardless. And this would be more akin to, uh, how it would work in a regular server, uh, a regular spa app or something like this. Um, but again, in, in my particular use case, I don't need this JavaScript at all until the user like is anywhere near the comment section, right? 
So this client visible directive is actually very useful for this particular use case, right? And so again, you know, all this is to say that, um, uh, you know, Astro is like uh, very um, HTML first, very static first, and um, enables you to have a nice templating language to write that 90, 95% of your app, 90% uh, of your content that is in fact static. It's just HTML, just text, just images, that kind of stuff. Um, and then when you need that little bit of interactivity, kind of sprinkle it in uh, uh, and be very selective over it, right? And so this is kind of um, where Astro feels very modern, right? And, you know, it's more than just like, you know, Jinja from 20 years ago or, you know, whatever. This is... Um, you know, kind of newfangled. And I don't want to say that, you know, Astro is the only one who's doing this. Uh, you know, there are others, like for instance, Marco has been doing this for at least five years, um, you know, where lots of the pages is static. Even React these days with their, with their server-side components are, are kind of uh, driving at a similar idea, right? Which is that, you know, parts of the page can be static and only really done on the server or even, you know, pre-pilled uh, statically, like static site generation, that kind of thing. Um, and, and, and we can be very, very, um, picky about where the state is, where the interactivity in the client is. Right. Um, and, and again, this is all coming back to, uh, I think the, the pendulum has sort of swung the, the other way in, in web development, right. Where people are sort of, uh, looking towards like, um, uh, looking to our past, looking to our previous, like, you know, when everything was server rendered by like, you know, these ser server driven apps, um, you know, one of the nice things was that they were, the pages were very lightweight, right? They were really just HTML, maybe a little bit of CSS here and there. Um, and, you know, you did like forums and posted to the server to, to get interactivity. Um, now we have these large, large, huge uh, apps full of tons and tons of JavaScript, like megabytes of JavaScript. And all of it has to load for anything to happen on the app, including the static content to be rendered at all. Um, and, you know, that's just expensive, right? The, the web is like that <laughs> uh, is the best way I can describe it, you know, bulky. Uh, and, and so uh, for things like mostly static content, uh, which again, I, I feel is actually, you know, most of the websites that you, you might be used to using, um, this kind of stuff is great. So, um, I, I recommend Astro. I, I, I think it's really well done. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's currently in beta. Uh, I, I do think it has some rough edges here and there, but, uh, overall the developer experience has been very ple pleasant to, to deal with. Um, and, uh, you know, if I ever want any interactivity in the future, like a comment section, I could very easily just add it uh, and have a, have a great time. So, well, this has been Astro. I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear about what you think about this in the comments uh, and uh, have a great day.